In the Parasitic is a story of a terrifying outbreak, creating mutated monsters ready to kill anyone on their way, and a terribly disturbed, brilliant scientist with a godlike complex willing to go to any lengths necessary in order to achieve his ambitions. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to Indoparasitic. If you have any video suggestions or game suggestions, make sure to send them to me on my Twitter or subreddit. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers, and with that said, let's begin. The story takes place in space. The protagonist, Sent, is one of the lead scientists working in a secret research facility located on an asteroid. We are introduced to the protagonist as his limbs are being pulled off by the mysterious mutated monsters lurking in the shadows of the facility. Even though Sent mysteriously survives this brutal encounter and manages to patch himself up, he is forced to crawl around the facility using his right arm. Through the speaker we are informed that there has been a containment breach, suggesting I think there must have been some sort of a highly infectious outbreak that caused the current events to unfold. While moving through the lab, we quickly learn that Sent is infected with a parasite, which explains how he is able to survive after losing a significant amount of blood and almost all of his limbs. He uses vaccines which seem to temporarily help him remain conscious and keep the parasite at bay from attacking his brain and taking over completely. We also learn on the other hand that taking the vaccine will only slow slow down the progress of the parasite, but won't stop it completely. As Scent progresses through the lab, we learn more about the outbreak, the parasite and Scent himself, that he alongside some other scientists work in a lab that had live subjects that they were experimenting on. They were injecting subjects with the parasite in order to conduct their inhuman experiments for the sake of science. Scent, even though barely alive, seems determined to continue his research and preserve it. We cannot afford to stop our research here. I have to end the evacuation orders. He decides to cancel the evacuation protocols even though he knows fully well it is not safe to do so and it can put a lot of other people in the facility in danger. That shows Sent as determined to continue his research no matter the cost, with his own life or the life of others not being a concern to him as long as his work is completed. Nantes revealed Sent was in fact the lead parasitologist and the parasite called Nautilus that he was experimenting on was highly dangerous and highly contagious as it was sequestered to an unmanned research facility. His notes reveal that samples originate from a universe older than our own, which suggests that the parasite might be some sort of ancient being. As we progress through the lab, Sent discovers bodies of scientists, researchers and staff members. The facility in which they work is high secret and its existence is strictly confidential and any form of security breaches are punishable by death, which demonstrates that the research and confidentiality is more important than the lives of the employees. This explains why the protagonist feels so indifferent while he encounters lifeless bodies of his colleagues spread out on the facility's floor, with many of them still alive begging for help. In simpler words, he's been conditioned and accustomed to death and misery. The protagonist finds old lab notes from which we learn more about the parasite, previous experiments and scent himself. At first, the experiment started small. They used small fruit flies to observe how they would be affected by the parasite. Continuing on the notes, we learn that the parasites can be quite selective when it comes to the hosts, with the only way being able to survive the infection to having both immunity and anomaly. But something to keep in mind is once the infection reaches the brain, it's all over. These observations, however, weren't enough for knowledge-hungry scent. He decided that further tests on larger specimens needed to be conducted, which is probably how the mutated monsters came to be. Sen soon stumbles upon the transcript from the conversation that happened between him and his receptionist Luz earlier on. Luz, working under scent, informs him of the meeting with the research board. She brings up the concern Provi has raised with the board, which is the reason for the meeting. Sent seems visibly irritated and repulsed by even the thought of taking the meeting, claiming his time is precious and his research is incredibly important important, displaying disgust with Luce's suggestions and poor treatment of his staff, which further paints his character as a self-important, conceited individual with inhuman qualities. When Sent finds the transcript, he reminds himself of Luce and decides to find out whether she is still in the facility. 
On his way, he encounters many mutated monsters of different sizes, shapes, and making various sounds. Some looking like modified humans, having two arms and walking on two legs, while others make rat noises, who are smaller and quite fast, which further indicates the monsters are in fact various large specimens used as a part of unethical experiments. From the notes, we learn that the experiments can't be conducted without a sacrifice, which further indicates the researchers were happy to go ahead with as far as killing many specimens like animals and even humans in order to conduct their research and learn more about the parasite. Through the notes left on the way, we learn more about Provi, which indicates that Provi was responsible for the well-being of the facility, its staff, and the research itself, as he was the associate researcher who worked on the development of the vaccine that meant to prevent the mass fatality event. We also learn more about the vaccines and the fact that they only work for a few minutes and are able to only slow down the parasite, but not killing it off completely. Notes left by Pravi further reveal how the relationship between Pravi and the protagonist Scent was. They didn't seem to be on the best terms with each other and the rivalry between them was more than noticeable. Quarreling over research and power. Sometime later, Scent finds an extract on Lucy's desk where she talks about the parasites and claims she has had visions and dreams where Pyre Day, a goddess of light and love, came to her and told her that she's chosen and the parasites are for her. Zen quickly dismisses Luce's internal thoughts and labels her as delusional, which points towards Zen's neutral need of rationalizing the reality, but also perhaps jealousy and hidden ambition. Thinking someone like Luce with no background in science or real-life accomplishments could never be chosen or special. Zen finds a time card indicating Luce has been staying in the facility at much later hours than Pravi or Zen, which rises as a concern to the protagonist to what she could have been doing in the facility so late after everyone had left. Along the way, we discover more notes that expose Scent's sinister inner thoughts on the previous tests that were conducted in the facility, which further confirmed the subjects that the tests were conducted on were humans, as the singular successful subject that had the ideal characteristics of both immunity and anomaly was a genius mathematician and a philanthropist. His entire family was also subjected to the lab testing, but they perished almost instantly. The humanizing the process while calling people and even entire families test subjects most likely helped Seth and many other scientists remain unemotional and pertinacious. The human that was put under set of rigorous tests demonstrated godly-like physical and mental abilities far beyond of a human being. The idea of godly-like abilities quickly engulfed Seth as he slowly became more impatient and more fascinated by the parasite. Seeing the possibilities, his ramblings transform and become more sinister, considering mass exposure, which surely would lead to many deaths, all in a hope of landing on a gift of superhuman abilities. Sense obsession with the idea of mass exposure was met with heavy criticism from Pravi, his associate researcher as well, Luz, claiming it was unethical to risk the future of the colony on the asteroid and even the entire civilization if that was ever to happen. From the test Pravi had previously conducted, we find out that the parasite could indeed spread even after subject's death, which makes it highly potent and highly dangerous. Quickly after Sent stumbles upon a mysterious note, it reveals that the bodies of the modified monsters left lying on the floor and infected with the parasite, seemingly dead, are not dead at all, but are in fact holding back waiting for a potential prey or perhaps another better host. The notes left by Scent over time become more and more chaotic and more obsessive than before. Scent is slowly losing his rational thinking and transforming into a power-hungry individual with a gut complex, claiming the parasites must be conscious and intelligent as they carefully select only worthy host buddies and kill off the unworthy ones. Egotism and inflated sense of self-importance leave Scent convinced he is worthy and it's his purpose to be connected with the parasite and become its host. He later stumbles upon a transcript between Pravi and himself revealing how the outbreak had started while the parasite had spread through the facility, with test subjects like monkeys becoming frantic and terrified while staff members working in the facility started to mutate. As quick as the parasite started to spread, it left Pravi petrified but sent mysteriously silent. The silence from the protagonist's side 
could be interpreted in many ways. However, based on his recent obsessive behavior, we can assume Sand might have been quite happy about the turn of events. Perhaps he could even be responsible for causing it in the first place, as he previously endorsed the idea of mass exposure. As Sand continues on his journey through the lab, he discovers a note left by Luce directed to the members of the research board, stating that the members should be careful while visiting the facility and stick to the safety protocols in place, as well as staying confidential about the nature of the research. This suggests that the members of the research board might have been in the facility when the outbreak happened. While going through the lobby, Sand finds an anonymous, bloodied note mentioning a mysterious entity which shows at random and out of nowhere. The note was left unfinished probably because the author of the note had been taken by the entity before they could finish their thoughts. While reading an abstract left by Luce on one of the computers, Sand learns more about Luce and her hidden relationship relationship with the parasite, further revealing why she was staying up late in the facility, while everyone else was already gone. Blues decided to learn more about the parasite by sending over the drone with her scarf to the research facility where the parasite was kept in hopes to understand her visions better. Through the camera, she observed insects infected by the parasite swarming the scarf and rearranging the fabric, and pulling out the threads until the holes in the scarf spelled the word you, which gave Luce comfort in knowing that she isn't crazy, but indeed chosen and made her even more curious to learn about the parasite and stay after hours in order to communicate with it. Sand goes through the notes left on Luce's desk, which further indicates that a Luce that starved for attention from Provi and not being taken seriously by Sand is finally feeling superior to them. The note reveals her deep desire to be appreciated and noticed which she receives from the parasite. At the end, Sand to his surprise finds Luz, who is still alive, even though he was expecting her to be dead like all the others. Luz brags on how well she feels and that she's more alive than ever before, when everything starts falling into place and Sand realizes it was Luz who released the parasite and caused the outbreak all along. Sand is not angry at Luz for causing the outbreak and killing everyone around them, however, he's disappointed and jealous because he isn't the one that was chosen by the parasite. He can't believe if someone ordinary like Luz could ever be chosen and blessed with such extraordinary privilege. How could they pick you out of everyone? You're half-witted, vapid, ignorant. You're the ignorant one, Sint. You think being dedicated to your work, worshipping knowledge, and valuing science over others' lives and happiness makes you above everyone else? You're not above me. You're not above Pravi. You're not even above the Lab Rats. You're immoral, unethical. You have no compass, no virtues, and you haven't even got the self-awareness to care. Without feeling, you're nothing. That's why they picked me. This universe has too many men like you. Luz fully embraces being the chosen one and her new godly abilities, claiming she has been chosen to be their god. That's why she released them. Sand, with his inflated sense of self-importance and ego, is deeply hurt and angered by the fact that someone as ordinary and simplistic like Luz could ever be chosen with her seemingly overjoyed to be finally more important than Sand and all the other patronizing and loathing intellectuals that she had to work with. Luz, now fully embracing her godly nature, accuses Sand of lack of care and love towards anyone but his work, of his unethical practices and treatment of the test subjects and other staff members, and lack of moral compass. She fully believes to be the ultimate power, ultimate punisher, and a judge. A god that punishes all living and dead. She claims that she was picked by the parasite to cleanse the universe of people like Sand. As a result, she decides to take the ship and leave Sent behind at the mercy of the parasite, who will eventually kill him. Sent, in total despair, asks her to allow him on the ship, but she does exactly what he would do and decides to leave him behind, even though the left behind Sent doesn't seem to give up just yet. The ending seems to be left on a cliffhanger for a sequel to be released, uh, completing the story. Either way folks, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host Dar, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care.